Hey guys, so it's springtime and I'm talking today about rebuilding my raised beds, but more specifically raised beds with pressure treated lumber. Now, so many people say that pressure treated lumber is dangerous. There are chemicals in pressure treated lumbers, but things have changed since 2003 or 2004. The arsenic that was once in pressure treated lumber is no longer there. And if you've ever built anything in the last 20 years, you'll probably discover it rotted out sooner than you expected. And that's because the arsenic is no longer in the wood. And it's a catch-22. You have wood that's safer, but it doesn't last as long. The older parts of my deck that I had are well over 25 years old, and they're still in great shape because they were purchased from the lumber yard pre-2003, 2004 in that area. But anyways, today I'm going to be rebuilding this with pressure-treated lumber, and I'll try to put some links in the description about talking about how pressure treated lumber is no longer as dangerous as it once was when it comes to having it in contact with soil or skin. One of the keys to making this is going to be this little piece right here, but I am using pressure treated lumber. I'm going from two by six by eights, which is what I had the lumber right here, and it's lasted for over 15 years. So it's really something that I like better. Now, some people like going with a metal. I think that the metal could re be releasing things into the soil as well, but I have a little trick to preventing the soil to wood contact, and it's really a cheap method of stopping that. So I'm gonna do it step by step, and I'm gonna show you a few things along the way about how this pressure treated lumber has stood up. It was purchased probably I'm thinking around 2007, 2008, and it was built in that time frame. So it's lasted for quite a while. It's currently 2024, and so it's been a great garden bed, but it's just time to replace them. They're starting to show their age, and I'm starting to find a lot of rot. And as you can see, this board right here is actually falling off. Now, originally on these beds, I used two 2 by 6s Today, I will be doing 2 by 12 boards where I won't have a gap, and I won't have any possibility of anything coming through here but of course I'm using a little method here that I'm going to prevent any of that anyways but this is how they originally were sealed put together with these four by four posts that just went a short distance into the ground the problem with that is these have rottened out and I know exactly why they rottened out prematurely and that was really my fault and I'll give you a close-up of how to prevent that but this wood overall has stood really well 15 years you can't really complain but it is still expensive to use pressure treated lumber, but what I've discovered is some of the metal raised beds that I thought about purchasing were actually double the cost of what I would pay for pressure treated lumber. And there's a couple of different places in my city that have pressure treated lumber. Now what I discovered today, I did some price comparisons on pressure treated lumber and there was a big difference between Lowe's and Home Depot. Now if you're outside the United States, I'm not sure if those hardware stores even exist. But what I discovered is Home Depot is cheaper on their lumber, so that's where I'm going to be purchasing all the lumber for these raised beds. Now, as I mentioned, I made a mistake when I first set up this vegetable raised vegetable bed. I originally used this type of watering device, and it was just an overwatering that sprayed everywhere broadly, and that was a big mistake. Even though it saved me a huge amount of time, it used too much water, and it probably caused some premature rot. These boards would probably be in better shape today, if I went with this type of system, micro irrigation that takes the water exactly to each individual plant and it saves a lot of water and it's just so much more efficient. So this is a Mr. Landscaper hose. I don't know if you can read it, but it actually says Mr. Landscaper on the hose. And these are Rainbird controllers. You can cut each controller on and off so you can have water going to an exact plant or once that plant has finished producing, you can cut it off. That'll save even more water. So even though drip irrigation seems to be what a lot of people like, I like this type of micro irrigation system where I can get water exactly to every single plant and I can stop it once it's stopped producing its vegetables for this year. So this is what I really prefer is the Rainbird multi-port. I think it has nine ports on it. And then the Mr. Landscaper hose. And there's two types of hose. There's a very stiff vinyl that's hard to work with. This is more of a rubber more flexible and it's lasted for many many years i don't think i've ever had a problem with rot out of this and it's well over 10 years old now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to clean out some of the weeds that have popped up over the winter i'm going to dig out around the edges and pile the soil up so it doesn't collapse into my rock walkways then i'm going to remove all of the boards and then i'm going to show you a couple of tricks to putting in the new boards one trick that will pre prevent any wood rot from happening sooner and it will probably add four to five years more life to the wood 
And also I'm going to do something different with this year's raised beds. I'm going to make it easy to sit right here and work into the bed. And it's really something that's going to save the wood as well. And you can use either pressure treated or non-pressure treated. But for me, like I said earlier, I'm using pressure treated. I don't want to deal with wood rot in five years when these boards are really expensive as they are now. So now I've gotten most of the soil mounded and pulled away from the boards. I'm going to remove the old boards. I'm going to check for how much rot is on them, if I can save some of them. And some of them appear to be in pretty good shape. They're not uh, all like that. Some of them had rot on the backside. You really can't tell it. But I'd already pulled out the plastic from around the edges on the inside. And I think that's what's preserved them for as long as it has taking some really heavy duty plastic, possibly a contractor's bag, you could use that. But putting it where the soil is going to come in contact with the wood is really important because that moisture is constantly being drawn into the wood. And so by putting plastic there, that's another thing that's probably preserved this wood because it's not the original type of lumber that lasted for decades, which is what I had before 2003 in my deck area. Post 2003, I built a deck and it completely rotten away and I've already had to replace it and the old wood is still performing great. So it's still in its original place. So we're gonna remove the wood. I'm gonna check the four posts around the corners and see how much rot's on those. And then we'll come in with the new wood and a couple of tricks to make sure that we have success with the new bed. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges because I have this mounted so high I'm getting a little bit of avalanche back into where I need to set the boards back. So I'm going to go around there and quickly remove any of the soil so I can come in and cleanly set the board down once I've prepped it for the bed. Now, as I may or may not have said, these are exactly four by eight beds. They were built in that size because it's just the easiest. I can just take an eight foot board, cut it in half, and then I've got two, I've got an end and I've got a centerpiece. That's exactly the right size for me. I like four by eight beds. It's easier to work from. And also the height. I don't mind the height being a little bit lower. Now, some people who have mobility issues are opting for the new large metal raised beds that have come out but there's been a lot of problems and if you look across youtube you'll see a lot of people talking about how to fill the beds and that's another issue these beds took over 500 bags of soil 15 years ago and it's settled and i've continually added black cow to the top of it i've also added shredded pine bark that wasn't treated with any kind of chemicals so that's the thing about the metal beds is if they're tall they're great for not having to lean over and work out of them but then you have the problem of filling them because putting that much soil in multiple beds, if you just have one bed, that's fine. But if you have multiple beds, I have 20 raised beds, it would take a ton of material to fill it. And of course, I don't want to do that. So I don't mind bending over. But people with mobility issues, again, you may want to opt for that. If you just have one bed, then that's not really a big deal. But if you're like me and you have this many beds, you're probably going to want to go with a shorter bed size. So I'm going to get the lumber, cut one piece in half and start the assembly of it before we put on our anti-moisture barrier. Now what I've got here is two edges and you're going to find this in the lumber area of most hardware stores now these I'm gonna have one at the top and one near the bottom and so these are designed to be outdoors so they should last for quite a long while and also I don't have to worry about the 4x4 post rotting as I'd done the first time when I'd done a 
this type of bed 15 years ago. So it's a little bit easier if you have something like this. These were like 78 cents each, so they were not expensive. So it's about a buck 50, a little bit more, a little bit under $2 to secure the corners. And it makes it easier so when I'm working on it, when I'm adding our moisture barrier, I can just flip it up on its side without it falling over. I might put in one more support piece just in case, just to keep it from moving, and then I'll remove it as I lower it back down. But I'm gonna install these before we put in our moisture barrier. Now, if it wasn't apparent, what I did is to just add a little bit of extra stability. I put in one screw like that on the top and the bottom, and that will help hold it together as well. But I also put these brackets in here, and I only use two screws, one on the top, one on the bottom. They're about a little bit, uh, around an inch long, and so nothing's coming through the other side of the board, so I don't have to worry about someone getting stuck with a nail. So anyways, that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish all four corners, and then I'm gonna tip it on its side and put in our moisture barrier. So I've got my basic bed assembled now and I'm going to tilt it on its side so I can add in the moisture barrier. I'm hoping I don't need to put some stabilization pieces of wood on the corners, but I'm going to just very carefully do that. And the only thing I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing is applying a very thick, heavy duty plastic to the inside, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to use a nail, excuse me, a staple gun to go all the way around it, probably four or five different pieces and overlap them just to make sure no moisture gets on the back side. The front side will be open to allow the, the wood to breathe, but the back side will be completely protected from the moisture in the soil. Now, to be honest, this is really a two-man job. It's not easy to do by yourself. But if you see some overlap like this, it could be some puddling under there. So when it rains, you don't want that. So just take your razor blade and cut as close as you can to the board to make sure any water that did accumulate behind this will easily drain out the bottom. So just remember, you don't want to have a flap coming up because then you'll have standing water in there and it will absolutely rot in no time flat. Okay, so we're ready to push our soil back up against the plastic and then we'll work on our cap, our seating cap, which will make it a lot easier working in the bed. If we want to rest or take a get off of our feet while we're working on collecting fruit or whatever, vegetables, we can easily sit on the corners of the bed and I'll show you how to put that together in just a sec. Now this particular soil has a little bit more pine bark in there than I want it to. I originally started out using the large pine bark and then I switched over to what's called at Lowe's soil conditioner. It's a very finely grained pine bark. The reason I use that is because weeding becomes a huge problem when you have 20 beds and they start to take over every bed. So the pine bark, about an inch thick, is going to resolve the problem of weeds popping up throughout your garden. And I do that every year. So I'm probably going to add four to six bags of black cow compost because my composter does not produce that much compost for me. So it does produce some, but it does not produce 20 beds worth of compost. So I'll have to buy that myself. And it's a little bit expensive, but it's really worth it when you see the results and how it really boosts your vegetable production. 
Okay, so I'm going to get started on the cap of this and I'll show you how to do the final part of this raised vegetable bed. So guys, this raised bed is now waterproof on the inside. It has waterproofing underneath our seat here. We're going to use this as a seat when we're putting in seedlings. It's very stable. I put some extra long screws in there. After I add the topsoil, or actually, excuse me, the, the black cow compost, it's going to raise it up just a little bit. That'll really help it. But like I said, if you're really worried about what might possibly be in the wood, whatever it was treated with, then you could bring the plastic all the way to the top and over where there's absolutely no possibility. I personally think the wood is safer than it used to be. Like I said, I'll put a couple of links in the description that explain what is in wood now and what is no longer in wood. And the primary thing that's no longer in pressure treated lumber is arsenic that's no longer in there. So anyways, I hope you've I hope my mic's held out this long because it's been a rather long project. So this is the final product. And I have 19 more to go. Now, some of them are like this one. They're only four by fours, but these four by eights are going to take me a little while. Hopefully, I can do this before the planting season, but it is a massive amount of work for one person to do alone. So I've got a lot of work to do. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.